All right, guys. So look, this is what a fish um, grow out greenhouse, grow out house, whatever you want to call it, looks like. It's pretty much like a, a greenhouse, you know. Uh, what is up, all you Stone Cold Superfly? Illmatic fish keeper, fucking does. You watch Aqua Funk. Quad is with me, Aqua Funk, and I'm standing here with Dan Connor from Consolidated Fish Farms out here in Riverview, Florida. And not only am I standing, but I'm dripping. I'm sweating. It's hot in here. It's, is this summertime? Is this considered summertime? Well, we, only have, we only have two seasons here, hot and hotter, so I'd say yeah. Okay, so it's summertime in Florida. This place is enclosed, um, and it's and it's humid. So, yeah. So, Dan Connor, he's a fish farmer out here in uh, Riverview, Florida. Like I said, his family's been doing it for years. And uh, I, want, I want to introduce you guys to him, and so... So that you can see what he's got going on. Very cool stuff. Very uh, interesting things. Um, Dan, please tell us your family history and your credentials. Sure. So, like Jay said, my name's Dan Connor. We own Consolidated Fish Farms. We've been doing this for about 20 plus years. Before this, we were just angel fish breeders with a small farm called Flamingo Fish Hatchery. Uh, we were raising over a million, two million angels a year. This is probably back in the early 90s, roughly, um, in that area. Um, since then. Uh, I worked as a biologist at, at University of Florida, where I worked on aquarium fish diseases for a short stint. Um, I also teach uh, aquaculture production to high school kids in order to get them into the field, because if that's something I want to be into, um, they need the background to do it. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, I sit on the Florida Aquaculture Association Board of Directors, specifically for for certifications and education outreach. All right, so there you go. Um, man knows what he's talking about. So this is how we're going to do this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and walk around this. He's got three different areas to this. Um, I've been trying to get him on film for a while, but we've been having to wait wait for things to line up. Um, he does sell online, which is a transition that a lot of fish farmers are, well, some fish farmers are, are moving towards, which I believe is a good thing because they can keep the majority of that money for themselves where the actual work is being taken place. Um, so I'm going to leave a link to his, his um, online his, his online store in the description below and to his YouTube channel. But let's walk around and I'm going to get him to talk about some of the things he's got going on. And how many how many uh, vats you think you got in here? Oh, I think we counted the other day. It wasn't that many. I think it was like 36. I thought there was like 70 something in here, but I grossly miscounted. It's like 36 <laughs> in here. I count. Look, you want to get me to um, subscribe to your channel? There's two things you have to do. One is you have to tell me something I did not know before watching your video, or make me laugh. Um, he tells me a lot of stuff I did not know. We was, he, was, he was talking about these severums and their coloration I thought was very interesting. Can you give a little recap on, over that real fast if you don't mind? Sure, no problem. So one thing we like to point out is what is the difference between a, a, a red spotted severum, what people are calling fire severums. And I think one thing most people don't realize is where the fish come from. A lot of the times for the really super bright colored red severums, they're using a hormone agent called MT or methyl testosterone. Essentially what that do, does is it enhances the color characteristics or sexual characteristics, right, to enhance it for male. And that's what's going to give you the brighter color. In Florida or in the U.S., we're not allowed to use that on aquarium fish. The food fish industry is, is allowed to use it, actually, which is interesting. Not sure not sure why it's not legal for here. But they actually, actually, as of now, are working on indexing it as an approved drug for fish farmers. Because this is what keeps us able to compete with imports, right? So when you buy those those peacocks, those really, those I don't know, strawberry peacocks, uh, some of those real bright colored alonicaras, a lot of those, not all of them, a lot of those, especially the red ones, are hormone. And sometimes you'll probably notice the color may or may not fade away in a few months. That's typically due to MT. Um, and that's kind of how it is right now. So it's right now it's just us trying to be more competitive gotcha. with what we can get. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. You also been doing some really cool... Look, I, you know, you can't be mad at a man that has a, basically a bathtub full of angels everywhere. Yeah. You know, I'm loving that. Um, I see you have goldfish mixed in with a lot of these. Yes. No issues? No, no issues. We actually brought the goldfish in. This has probably been like six months ago now because we were thinking about breeding them. Uh -huh. Nobody breeds goldfish here in the state. Um, I think we're actually thinking about it. I think we have one breed that breeds goldfish, but no one breeds fancy fancy goldfish. No randas, no red caps, um, nothing like that. So we're, we're, we're trying it out. All right. I'm not going to lie to you. I am very jealous that you have some albino red-eyed angels. <laughs> um, I had, That was um, my first breeding pair. And... Um, <sighs> yeah, we've got we've got a few we're working on. And we're gonna keep walking, but explain to us these huge things of uh, um, betas you got all over the place, if you don't mind. Yeah, no problem. Because I'm over here looking at this one. I know you got a couple, so we'll just catch them as you talk. Sure, sure. So one thing we wanted to do is betas aren't bred commercially in the states at all. It's just purely from a labor labor intensive standpoint, not feasible to raise. So most people in most companies or importers will buy from Thailand. They raise them in I seen Vietnam and Singapore. But we were really curious if you could get away without jarring them in a larger environment, would you have many issues? And we're not saying we perfected it, but we definitely have found a lot of success in that realm. 
um, with with betas. And one thing, or betas, however you want to pronounce it, I say betas. I, I, I say betas, say betas too. I, I know it's betas. My life. I know it's probably betas. It's betas. But we are noticing a few things. One, we are still getting good production. Uh, the worst thing we are seeing is a little bit of a little bit of fin nipping, but not not as much as we were anticipating. So once we get them big enough, we're jarring them. And about that time, they typically have pretty good fins still. We'll jar them, let them sit for a couple weeks. And after that, the fins typically look pretty good. So uh, we're gonna keep trying at it and see see what we get. And you know, it's right now it's a, it's a trial and error type. Thing. So what I'm getting so far is that you guys are trying to do things differently than in the past because of the competition from overseas. Well, yeah, I mean, imports, you know, from a very honest standpoint, imports have crushed uh, the Florida fish farmer uh, over the last probably 15 years. Mm -hmm. um, and most of the fish you see in your pet stores today, even though a lot are bought out of Florida, a lot are also imported. And this is one other way we're trying to showcase maybe a different product. You don't have to buy uh, overseas and you can buy local. All right, these are two fish that I really wanted you guys to see. We have uh, these albino, are these albino sailfin mollies? I believe so. Those came from our creamsicle mollies, and we kind of picked them out a while ago. And our plan is to breed them, but truthfully, we haven't had a chance to breed them yet. So we took some of our brood stock and some of the fish we just don't have time to get to, and we kind of put them out here so we would have more time and more tank space. Because there's a male in here, that male right over there, I don't know if you see it, it's got yep. red. That's a good, what, three inches? That's a, that's a huge fish. Yeah. It's a huge molly. So... I would imagine, and, and if, if I could see his fin, he looks like a, it's a sail fin. I believe so. But uh, you have those, and then here's another fish. I don't know if you're cool with us showing these fish, but uh, yeah. I've never seen these before for all you guppy people out there. And um, they're some type of, I have no clue. And uh, what, what was it that so we was talking I, about these guys? I'm not honestly sure. So what, what we did is a while ago, we, when we decided to make all these changes, we decided to bring up a breeder from Miami. And when he came, he had a ton of fish he was bringing. This was one of the strain of guppies he brought in. I know we were working on some jade head metallic uh, guppies that have some different type tails. Um, we were working on those for a while, and these, along with his other guppies he brought in, uh, we just kind of let sit until we have time to get to it. All right. Um, there's a waterfall on top of us. Yeah. I know what it is, um, but please explain what's going on with this water over here. Sure. So picture the most low-tech thing you could imagine uh, for filtration. And I say filtration. It's not realistically for filtration, but it's for degassing. So for our water, we obviously can't afford city water to be too expensive to run a system like this. So we have a well. In our well, we have pretty low oxygen and really high saturated hydrogen sulfide or sulfur that run the X-mount. So what we do is we pump water from our well to the top of these barrels in this tub uh, back. And inside there, you'll see bio balls, purple bio balls or black bio media, and it breaks up the water. And you'll hear the water running because it's forcing oxygen or agitation in the water in order to A, degas off the sulfur, because sulfur in the water is bad for the fish, and then also give more oxygen to the fish. And then from here, it's all gravity fed, so no electric. Um, it's purely gravity fed down through all this, the entire system, in every single bag. Mm -hmm. So that gas, that gas, it, that sulfur, so basically just by shooting it at something and get it agitated, mm -hmm. it, 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 burn, it gases off. The, the gas mm -hmm. leaves the water. Sure. Okay, I get it. So that's yeah. why he does that. It, it doesn't go directly from the ground to the to the um, vats. It's uh, it, it gets uh, churned up. Um, what size are these vats anyway? So the concrete barrel vaults, I believe, were right at 300 gallons, and I think the fiberglass vats we installed were a little under 275. Yeah, these are barrel vaults. People, <laughs> people. This is where you put dead people at, and then you put them in the ground. That's correct. Um, and to be honest, I've seen them at a couple of fish farms. This this seems to be the way um, fish farmers it's have been the doing it. One, it was the number one vat system used by Florida fish farmers. All right. All right. So here we are. We're in his, on his outdoor outdoor property where he has these fish ponds. A lot of you guys may not know that a lot of the fish you get came from outside in a big puddle like this. It's, it's a pond, but you know, um, and I always, when I first got here, I always thought it was incredible that we spent so much money on trying to duplicate, you know, uh, you know, create a, a habitat. And uh, these guys out here digging holes in the ground and, and having these fish grow. So tell us a little bit, how many, how, how big are these ponds and how many of them are on your property, roughly? Sure, so I think today we think we have around 36 ponds. We had about, 35, 50, actually about 50% more a few years back because the water level and the water table dropped here, we had to redig them out. So each pond now, instead of being 12, 15 feet deep, are all 25, 30 feet deep um, in order to keep about six foot, eight foot of water in the pond typically year round. Um, they're about, I'd say probably 30 feet by almost 75 to 100 feet right now. Give you a quick look right there. And what's in this pond right here? Just to... So we have some, some green, uh, green tears. And then we have some, apparently we have 
have some green sailfin mollies that happen to show up in the pond too. Yeah, the green sailfin mollies, um, I think I'm going to have to go home with some of those. Those are some of the ones I talked to you guys about. I really want it, and I can go out and get all wet with a net and jump in the water, um, but I'm just going to just get them from here. But, um, all right, so explain to me, because I know how it works, but explain to these people, how do you fill this with water? You just dig a hole in the ground and it fills up on its own. Yeah, the water table is so high up here that if you dig far enough down, which apparently isn't that deep, um, the water comes from out the ground upward. So there's not a whole lot of, fi there's no filling going on. The only time um, this, these, these things are empty is when they're cleaning them out. Um, I'll show you in some of the B-roll, a machine they have over there that sucks the water out when they do some. I was actually just talking to him. Um, they're going to go ahead and uh, pit me out and have me work for a day on a fish farm. <laughs> and uh, I think it's going to be cool. I'm going to do a video about it. But, um, yeah, so this is what, what's the number one problem with this? What, what, is, what is your biggest obstacle with this? Uh, your biggest obstacle for this kind of work is it's, it's super labor intensive. It's very, very hard, very grueling work. And truthfully, you're not growing things in these ponds year round. So everything, once it starts hitting about end of October, from then until about now, is about when you start growing some more stuff out, everything just sort of stays at the same size. It doesn't grow very fast, right? Because temperature drops, the lower the temperature, um, you're likely to have die off um, in that aspect of it. You know, for most of our fish, they can handle most of the cold, so we don't have to cover them. A lot of farmers with very sensitive fish will cover their ponds with plastic, and that's in order to keep them insulated enough so they don't lose them during the wintertime. And what's the number one type of fish that is ideal for this type of growing? Well, I don't know anymore. I mean, it's been so many. A lot of people do live bears. Most of the people they do is they do stuff that can handle the cold. Live bears, and I've seen a lot more people putting out African cichlids that they can grow bigger in a bigger environment because they can get them there quicker and faster. They'll typically do them in the summer months anyway. Put them out there for five months, you're going to have something that's two inches, and it's going to be something that's going to be a nice male by the time they bring them in in September, October. I know what the fish at. You know, you know what? Are you getting fish today? Yeah. Which fish are you getting? Um, you like those fish? Those are... Those are su angels and sucker fish. I love angels. Yeah, but they're too dry because they don't do this. They don't do this. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You like these fish? <laughs> Let's look at these fish. <gasps> Ooh, that's a pretty fish. Look at the red fins. Yeah, they're You know what type of fish those are? Mm-hmm. They're beautiful. That's what type of fish? They're the beautiful type of fish? Yeah. Yeah, they are. And look at those yellow ones. All oh, the little yellow ones. Yeah, those are cute, too. Yeah? Yeah, blue is thigh. Oh. Now, how strong are you? Four. You're four, so yeah. you are like super strong. Did you eat your uh, cereal this morning? No. No. <laughs> it's alright, I think you're still pretty strong. Because I'm going to get you to carry these for us, okay? Think you can do that? Mm -hmm. Alright. I don't have to carry that. There you go. Alright, hold on. You got it? Okay. Here, how about you hold them on the bottom? Can you put your hands here on the bottom? Put your other hand here. I got it. There you go. Good? Got it? Good job. You are so strong. All right. All right, what's the plot? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right, so now we're inside his showroom. They have they had a uh, a big office space that they turned it on. And by the way, if you are in the Tampa, Riverview, Ruskin area, and you're looking for a place to get quality fish. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, doesn't have a whole lot of fish in it, but what they do have is extremely healthy. And a lot of it is stuff that you can't find at your big box store. So, um, I'm gonna have the address down there in the um, description below. And uh, if you talk to him, maybe they may not have it here, but they might have it in the back. They, you know, So you, they're, they're willing to work with you is what I'm getting at. So we're in the showroom um, and it's been building over time. Um, tell us a little bit about your online sales, your walk-in sales. Sure. Um, how's that working out? It's working out pretty well. So we just launched our website maybe two and a half weeks ago. We started taking stuff in. We're bringing it from our farm, from other farmers, putting some stuff into some tanks and seeing kind of just what sells and playing trial and error, essentially what comes in. Um, we're seeing pretty good results. People like coming here. I mean, we're cutting a whole link out of the supply chain. So what that really means is when you buy it a little bit more direct, less handling, always going to be healthier fish. Yeah. You know, you got to think about it. If you get fish from a really big box chain, when that fish got to its distributor, it came more likely from overseas. And imagine having a system like this with about, let's say, 200,000 fish from six different countries. How many different diseases do you think those fish might have? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Quite a lot. From ours, we get them just from one source, typically the different farms. And they go into a different building, they get quarantined for a little bit, we see how they act, then we put some over here once we feel like they're good enough. Mm -hmm. um, so you cut out a whole length of people that touch the fish. 
which always leads to healthier fish. Not that you know, you're not gonna have problems here and there with something you might get here and there. You know, things happen, but obviously, but I can tell you one thing I like about coming here so far. Every time I've came here, I've seen a different type of fish that I wanted. Um, they have the fish for the community tanks, but then they'll have sporadic. Uh, like for instance, I just did that video on the curbsets. I got it here. Um, so I'm just gonna tell them I need some more. So whenever you give me a call. But um, yeah, I do like the curbsets. Yeah, nice, yeah, nice I, I was kind of like iffy about it, but I was like, yeah, I'm gonna give it a shot. I, I kind of fell in love with that fish. Okay, you did farming for the longest, right? Yeah. Now, farming and selling to the actual public is two different things. You're, Absolutely. In a farming, you're, you're selling to um, people, a distributor, distributor yeah. who don't really care. But now you have to get really involved. So Absolutely. what do you tell them? Well, it depends. So we try to make the layout as simple as possible. A lot of what we do, as you'll notice, a lot on the top is our community fish. Mm -hmm. Outside of a few sporadic tanks, what we tell people is a lot of our fish up top can be mixed together. We have a few we don't recommend, right? Blue grammies is one of them. They tend to be a little bit more, more fin nippy, right? Tiger barbs in here, obviously it can be mixed, but they are fin nippy. They're a little bit more nippy the fins. We try to tell people to stay away from that. And that's how we sort of break down the bottom level here. We try to do a lot more in cichlids, African cichlids, a lot of magunas, a lot of rockfish um, that typically can go together if they're of similar size. And that's what we're telling people, like what's what's a good idea, what's not a good idea. I don't want to lead them in the wrong direction, but that's that's a generally generally what we're telling people to fish, and then obviously it's a case by case basis. I don't they want to do more African cichlids that are larger. Okay. I see you over here. Just just real quick, I, I see yep. it says Florida large neons. Yes, right here. Yeah, I never heard of a Florida neon. So neon neon tetras. Yeah. So the difference you're going to notice, and I don't think most people would ever catch it, but I know this is a little off the subject, but I had to ask. No, no. And when you look at neons in stores, typically you're going to see them, and they're going to be like half inch. Uh -huh. A lot of them half inch, not much bigger than that. The large neon is going to be inch, a little bit over an inch. Okay. It's a little bit bigger fish, essentially. But the Florida part of it. It's grown in Florida. Oh, so it's a homegrown neon. Yeah, homegrown neon. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. The the biggest okay. selling point for Florida fish has always been in size and color okay. and quality. And a big thing for neons for Florida rays, you'll notice they're just going to be a bigger fish. Okay. Hey man, I really appreciate you letting me come by and um, checking out your spot. Like I said, I'm going to put all his contact information um, in the description section and in the comment section below. Um, if you live in the Tampa, if you live anywhere, you know, there's a close to Riverview, you're willing to drive, definitely a spot you should check out. Um, and I appreciate you guys, I appreciate Dan for um, having us out. And like always, take care of yourself, take care of your family, and take care of your